What's a family office? How do you get started with one? We're going to talk to Ted Cronin at Manchester Capital Management about that. We're going to get a few stock ideas too. Hi, Ted. How are you? Good, thanks. So tell me, I'm hearing family office everywhere. What's a fam how did this? How did family offices take off? I gather they've, you know, really. Um, become more popular lately. What are they? Why, what do they do for the investor? It's an old tradition of Europe, more common now in the U.S., but um, it's gotten into the news lately because of regulatory pressure <clears throat> on certain hedge fund managers and so forth that have managed money for other people now have come back to just managing money for their own personal family. Uh, we started managing money for our own family assets, and over the years, which has been some 25 years, have grown to the point where we now care for about 80 different families. And for that, we provide every service that a family might need. So that includes not only the core of investment management, but it also includes things like wealth transfer strategies, looking at insurance and risk issues, looking at charitable, running private foundations. Uh, you know, the, the joke in the family office business is walking dogs. And the truth is we actually have walked a dog. <laughs> <laughs> but we've also... Was that a big dog or a small dog? I think it was a small, small dog. dog. I wasn't okay. there. But, but, you know, we, we do... Um, just about anything, and I get calls about the electricity went off and it's a freezer. You know, this is definitely gonna, stuff your big wirehouse broker isn't going to. Is incapable of doing, right. and we can do it because there'll be periods of time when we do more work than we get paid for, right. but there'll be other periods of time when the family's set up that we get a nice revenue stream for the work that we do. You, I'm guessing you need so much money to get into this type of service that it's impolite to ask how much you would need. But I'm, <laughs> I'm the kind of guy who needs to ask Ted how much money do I need. How well, much money just to start a conversation with the reality. With if you have a few million dollars, your life is not very complex. Right. And there's a limited number of trusts and other right. structures and different kinds of things that you need. When you get up into the 25, 50, 100, 200 million dollars, your wealth becomes of a scale that you have multiple trusts, multiple issues, matters about children. A consistent issue with family offices are the matriarchs and the patriarchs deciding, trying to, trying to decide how much money to give their kids. 25 to 100 million up, that's when you need to call that, Ted. Yeah, three, right. four hundred million dollars. I'm, you I'm really have your, a world so complex. I'm going to keep your number handy. You're not going to hear from me, you're not gonna hear from me right away. But let's, uh, let's, let's talk about some, some different investment areas you like. Now, you mentioned earlier when we were talking that you like technology particularly in private equity. What's, what's the benefit of uh, private equity? Well, there's two aspects to it. I think technology is really uh, changing the world as we know it. And last night we had this fantastic you know, presentation from Ishmael about um, the way the world is changing at an ever accelerating rate. And a lot of that is a function of technology. So as a sector, we, we like it a lot. The private equity part is that by becoming somewhat illiquid, investing in things that have longer time frames, you pick up return expectations. So if you buy a stock in the public markets that can yeah. be traded any day, you might not get the same kind of return rates that you would if you invest in the right Google when it starts, Facebook when it starts, so well, forth and how, so how about How about those though? What about for an ordinary Joe or Sally who's, who's faced with the regular stock market? You still like those <laughs> FANG stocks right here? Uh, not necessarily the Netflix part of the FANG part. But I do, think, I, I do think uh, Google, the alphabet, yes. and I do think the other big ones like Amazon, Microsoft, these big, big companies, they are unstoppable. They are, they are really going to dominate for a long period of time. And still represent decent value here? Very good value. I, I cannot see them really struggling. I mean, certainly they will go up and down with the markets, right. but if you look at a company like Apple, the innovations that is occurring there, the market share that it has, yeah. the technology it's inventing, the new things that are going on, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality is going to coming out. That's going to be another big, big thing. It's going to be an industry moving kind of transaction. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Okay. Thanks for talking about it with me, Ted. It was great. It's nice to be there. And thanks for watching.